who's a genuine human being to start with, one of the few general officers I ever met in my 31 years in the military who would look at you and say, don't stop talking because I don't agree. Please, I want your I want your views and I want your opinion more powerfully and more strongly when you disagree than when you agree. I can find a thousand people to agree with me. I want somebody to tell me I'm wrong and then prove it to me or try to prove it to me. And he was a very kind man, very gentle man. Um, he was, if anything, terribly naive. He approached the world like this. Hello, I'm happy to meet you. Until you prove otherwise, and you have to do it dramatically, I'm going to assume you're as good a man as I am. And he got fooled lots of times. Lots of times. Okay, I think we have time for maybe two more questions. Next question. Yeah, Colonel, uh, when Colin Powell went to UN and he said Iraq has weapons of mass dis destruction, did he know it's not true? No. I was there with him almost every minute of every day. I lived at the CIA. Um, I'll give you one dramatic example of how he was treated. It was the third day. We were there seven days and seven nights. It was the third day, late afternoon. He had never physically accosted me in the 16 years I'd been with him to that point. He grabbed me by the lapel like this drug me into a room off the corridor of the National Intelligence Council, sat me down in a chair, slammed the door shut, and said, we're alone in here, right? I said, well, it is the CIA, boss. <laughs> he, did, he wasn't amused. Um, so I sat down. He said, I want all of this stuff about Saddam Hussein's connections with al-Qaeda taken out of the presentation, every bit of it. It's all junk. I think he thought I was going to object. I said, I don't object. I think you're right. Oh, got a smile on his face, turned around and walked out. I went over to Lynn Davidson, who was sitting at the computer. She was putting the thing together. And I said, Lynn, I know you've been hard working and everything else, but you've got to go through it, and I'll help you. We're going to extract everything in there that says Saddam Hussein had contacts with al-Qaeda. Leaning against the door jam was John McLaughlin the deputy director of central intelligence, the deputy director of the CIA, the only really professional intel guy, whole life, 30 years in intelligence, in the group. George Tenet was a politician. He disappears. Stupid me. I should have immediately smelled a snake, you know, a rat. We go back and we resume the sort of rudimentary rehearsal that Powell was doing at that time in the DCI conference room. And George gets up and leaves. Well, I'm a rate. I'm, I, I'm sitting beside Powell and I told George, you don't leave when the Secretary of State is here. And he leaves. 15 minutes he's gone. So I'm about to jump up and go fetch him. And all of a sudden he comes back in and he sits down beside Powell and in a stage whisper, which I could clearly hear and I will never forget these words, he said, we have just learned from the interrogation of a high-level al-Qaeda operative of significant contacts between the Mukhobarat, the secret police of Saddam Hussein, and al-Qaeda to include training them in the use of biological and chemical weapons. Powell looked at me and said, LW, put it all back in. Story continues. I'm up in the Waldorf Astoria, 2 a.m. in the morning before the 9 o'clock presentation on the Security Council floor. And I'm doing what Powell told me to do six hours prior when we rehearsed in the cafeteria at the top of the UN-US mission, US-UN mission in New York. And he said, it's too long, cut some stuff. And I said, terror, right? He said, yep. So I'm in, the, I'm in the hotel room, and I'm cutting stuff out. And Phil Mudd walks in the room. He wasn't even staying in the same hotel. What are you doing here, Phil? I'm over here because I heard you were cutting things out of the presentation, and you're cutting my part. He was tenant's terrorism czar. 
I said, you're damn right I am. The boss told me to. Get out of here. So the next morning, I knew Phil would rat me out. The next morning, 8.30, right before the presentation at the Security Council, Tenet walks up to me, puts his arm around me. He says, I hear you were cutting things out of the presentation last night. I said, damn straight I was. What did you cut out? A bunch of terror stuff. You didn't cut the stuff about Saddam and al-Qaeda, did you? No, because that was the most powerful thing with the American people. No question about it. All the polls showed that afterwards. Okay, no problem then. He went up there and sat down. So he was at the last minute trying to get it back in, what Phil had, you know. But it, we, we didn't take the most important thing out. Later, Tenet has to fess up. I don't think Tenet was lying. I think John McLaughlin was lying to Tenet. He fessed up to Colin Powell in August, well after the February presentation, and he said that was Sheikh Al Libby. He was tortured in Cairo by some of the worst torturers in the world, and he recanted the moment the torture ended, and the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, put a burn notice out on his testimony. Well, the first thing I did when I found out about that from the secretary was I called John, and I said, why didn't you tell us about the burn notice? He said, well, it was a computer glitch. Yeah, right. 